Hey everybody, you're listening to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast where we get to know musicians through their stories and introduce you to some of their music. I'm your host, Carl Anderson, and today we're very happy to be at Arlen Studios. My guest is Calder Allen. Calder Allen is a third generation songwriter who wasn't pressured to be one and was always encouraged to do whatever inspired him. His brother, Sled, was eight years older and indeed inspired him. He showed young Calder the world of basketball, fishing, and songwriting. It was in the eighth grade when he was watching his Uncle Bucka, his grandfather Terry, and his father Bale play on stage at the Paramount in Austin, where the seed was planted. During the pandemic, he keyed into the songwriting process and started putting together a body of work, when he played it for guitarist, band leader, and producer Charlie Sexton, a family friend, Charlie liked it so much that he produced it. He's on his way, ladies and gentlemen, and we're very glad to have him. Calder Allen, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. What you going to start us off with? This first song is called Good Times, and it was actually written in this room that we're in right now at, like, you know, 3 a.m. <laughs> nice! <laughs> Said, oh my, my, times are changing, going by, wishing they were still. Said, oh my, my, thinking about the good times, listening to the mill. My heart's a changing, my mind's a racing, I'm running fast, running from it all. It all. 
said, oh, my, my, thinking about the good times, wishing they were still. That's the first single, yeah? Yeah, so that's the first single that, that came out on the, the record that we're pushing out right now. It's really exciting to have you here. This, uh, the record, it's, it feels like it came about like so fast, you know, and it's, it's so good. And, I, and I, want, I want it, it's such an interesting story. And I want to sort of start from, you know, how did it all get started for you? And probably it all got started probably pretty early. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I actually started writing songs was kind of over COVID and, uh, but I always, I always wrote when I was growing up, you know, whether it was, you know, in Santa Fe at my grandparents' house or, you know, just during class when I got bored, you know, I always, always kind of put myself in these worlds and kind of wrote stories and right. imagined myself in these different places. Right. And you had, uh, you have an older brother. Yeah. Your older brother is Sled. Sled, yeah. Sled is it? And that was also like your great grandfather or something I want to say. Was that? Yeah. So my great grandfather was a. MLB player and you know he got the nickname sled when he he had a huge you know shoe size and over whenever he slid into base it made like this giant dust ball in front of him and it looked like he was riding like a like a toboggan like a sled that's awesome I didn't know that like I knew that he played ball but I didn't yeah. know why they called him. that's great yeah he had some big old hooves yeah <laughs> he was on the St. Louis Browns I want to say yeah. right yeah that's so cool so it, yeah I think that's right so yeah, the St. Louis team in the, that time was the Browns, uh, and so uh, you have a just you know really family that's uh, you know creative, and you're born into it. But you know you're not pressured into it. Your older brother Sled is eight years older. Yeah, and he's kind of someone you're looking up to. Yeah, well that dynamic was always interesting because we, you know we never had the phase when we're both in the house, kind of at like the same age where we're you know combating each other. It was always very like. Like he would do something, and I would want to do that. Like very like right. mentorship type, mm -hmm. you know, dynamic. It was you were too far apart to be competitive. Yeah. Now so, that's changed. Mm -hmm. Now that, you know, but that's, <laughs> no, but uh, no. But when growing up, it was yeah. It was always I would just wanted to be like him and do what he was doing. And he was doing a lot of fun things, right? Yeah. Like basketball. Yeah. Well, I mean, even. Even uh, in middle school, you know, he had a band and was playing a bunch of shows around town. And okay, so that it, like that was the first time that I realized that you know he he was a drummer and, and the band's called We Go to Eleven. It was like him and two of his buddies. We go to eleven. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, so that was the first time I saw like him do that stuff. But even you know at that age, I was just like, okay, he just drums and stuff. I I was inspired by that. But when he went to college and you know basketball too was huge for me. When you know he, I was growing up, he was always you know star of the high school basketball team and uh -huh. kind of like this did this he play college Austin. too he was gonna go to colorado to walk on and play basketball up there but it led him into getting into fly fishing because he tore it you know he had a huge leg injury and oh that's right but it was kind of great because he got into fishing and like this whole world up there and kind of influenced me to get in on it fly fishing right yeah 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 i yeah um it's great that you had an older brother show you but that you said that fly fishing is really important to you yeah it was the first thing that i think i realized like you know basketball it's kind of set you know you go to practice you work out you know it's it's kind of like a set time but fly fishing was the first thing that i didn't realize how many hours i was putting into it because i just kind of got lost in it right so you know i would be fishing for you know, like eight hours on the perd analysis like outside of town just like completely space out and be like oh i could go back home <laughs> like, right you know and you know kind of just drifting away in that and it was kind of the first time that i kind of it was my first form of expression where mm -hmm. I could like, that's kind of how I connected into, you know, um, 
like my art form and like you know tying flies and kind of like the process behind the whole you got into the tying the flies yeah and that was kind of you know what I, that was kind of what i did in my free time and how i express myself it takes a long time to tie a fly right and well it just depends on you know what you're doing you know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what i liked about you know there was especially growing up in austin you know it's really, especially with fly fishing, you learn kind of all the different techniques and technicalities of it with just the water that's around here. So uh -huh. you can go anywhere in the world and kind of fish differently, and Austin kind of preps you for that with just, like, the waters that are around. So, like, with fly, so any body of water is fly fish, you are going to approach it differently in your motion? Well, no, it's more, it's you know, um, fly fishing, you're, instead of casting, like, a weighted lure, you're casting the line. So the line is weighted to a point where you use momentum and you shoot it out the tip of the rod. So pretty much, you know, if there's a still body of water, you have to cast it out there and you have to make the fly move. So you move the line with your hand. And then if there's not, if it's a river, like a lot of stuff in Colorado, like what my brother was first exposed to, it's all kind of a fluid motion letting the river kind of move the fly for you. So you just want to keep the line tight and let the river do all the moving. Okay. But just different dynamics. Well, Austin has both of those types of water. You know, they have rivers and they have, you know, lakes and stuff. So right. you learn kind of both methods to the sport. And did you end up learning to fly fish on the ocean? No, well, I, I went down to the ocean was like way later on in fly fishing, like probably like like three years into it was when I, you know, realized that you could saltwater fly fish and stuff. That's an, that's so interesting to me because I, I, you told me that and I was like, I never heard of that. Yeah, well, it's not it's not like the, you know, you go out deep sea and, like, you're doing that. It's more like, you know, you stay real shallow and you try and, you know, you know get into these small back spots where mm -hmm. you can see the fish, you know, tailing or moving and I gotcha. you just sight fishing, which is awesome. It's kind of like hunting, is that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so he shows you he shows you basketball, he shows you fishing, you, you really enjoy them. And then how, when did the music start? Hmm. I think when I started listening to music was actually through fishing because I started watching all these like fishing documentaries and films mm -hmm. and the music that was playing in them. I kind of was like, Oh, that's cool. And like, it like would like direct connection to like, okay, that's playing when, while I'm watching something I like. So it made me like the song, you know, I was like, totally. Oh, that's cool. Definitely. But a lot of those, you know, in those films are like, like real instrumental, like kind of ballad songs that are just, you know, real intense, but like very cool. And so I cinematic, uh, yeah, very cinematic. But so that's when I kind of got into that. And I remember my brother visit. I visited him one time, and when he was in college, and he was playing this revivalist track, and I was like, "Oh, that's sweet." And that's kind of when I started listening to more like you know, not like top forty radio and stuff, and kind of like diving deep into that. And mm -hmm. of course, I was always exposed to it, you know, right. growing up in like the family that I grew up in, and you know, my grandfather. You, you know. could you you can tell everybody who he is. I think <laughs> <laughs> just so the kids know at home, your grandfather is Terry Allen. Yeah, who's just a wonderful artist. Yeah, so you know, it's I always kind of had one foot in in the sense of like the artistry behind songwriting and um, what it means to like express yourself through music and arts and stuff. But when I actually took self interest in that, it was kind of through fly fishing. Is uh, that's how it connected for me? I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Total sense. So the two are like you need them both, right? I mean, they and they inform each other in some way. Yeah, they coincide. I think sometimes they don't, but when they do, it 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 works. Right on. Um, tell me about your songwriting approach. It's kind of different for each song. So you know, sometimes like the song "Good Times" I just performed. Charlie and Jacob were were comping. Charlie is sorry, yeah, we got to say and, last names Charlie of this. Sexton and then Jacob Skiba, who, who's the head engineer here at yes. Arlen, and uh, they were working on one of the tracks. And I think it was Stone, which is the next single that's coming out. But it was that I think it was that song, and they were working on it. It was like I want to say two a.m. and it was it was late. And they were tired and were kind of you know running on fumes. Mm -hmm. But I, I just get my guitar and you know go in the back room here. It's dark, and I was like, oh, this is cool. Like all these people have like recorded in here. It's dark. I'm just right. gonna have like you know like a moment. <laughs> so totally. I, I come back in here, and I just start playing you know real basic chords. I'm just like, and then I just like kind of got into it and got into like this weird rhythm, and that was like the whole thing where it, I just came up with a melody and started singing to it, just random stuff. And it wasn't really put together, but it's kind of you know the the frameworks and like the structure, the bones of the song was you know here at in that moment, and then when. Right here, we're pretty yeah, like, much right, right, right where here, we are like, right, right now. Here. Yeah, isn't that wild? Yeah, it's great. 
so it basically pure inspiration. That yeah, came I think it you. just happened. I don't really know what it what where it came from. I, you know, I was going through a lot at the time. You know, the studio process for me was really influential in the sense of just kind of like, okay, this is what I want to do. You mm-hmm. know, like this is like how I I want to keep doing this. And there was some st- other stuff going on, you know, with just leaving high school and stuff and kind of stuff that was on my mind. So I came back in here. And I was like, oh, my, my, times are changing, going by, wishing they were still. And it was just kind of like, it's like the whole gist of like the song is just like, it's not like you, you know, you can always say you want to go back, but it's good that it happened. But, you know, looking back with positive mindset and not, you know, neglecting anything or. Absolutely. Like that, yeah. Excellent. Um, I'm ready to jump into another song if if you're ready for one. Yeah, sure. Great. What uh, what are you gonna play for us next? I'll do a song called "Bend of the River." Bend, yeah. Bend and this was a uh, a poem that I initially wrote, and it was supposed to just stay a poem until I started playing guitar. And it's from my buddy named Harrison England, who moved away when I was, I want to say like mid, like it was sophomore year of high school. He okay. left to go to Paris, Texas, and I didn't have a going away gift for him because I didn't really know what to get him that I thought was meaningful. So I just wrote a poem for him and Sweet. I'll, I'll play the song. Awesome. Bend of the river with the creek bend by its side Stories to be told, old stories left behind. So pack all your bags, you can go far away. Don't ever look back, it's gonna be okay. So go, go, keep on running, just roll, roll, keep on gunning. Don't ever waste a bit, roll, man. Go, go, keep on running, just roll. Lessons I've learned will be on my mind As you walk away, as you cross that line So, go, go, keep on running, just roll, roll Keep on going, don't ever waste a bit Roll, man Go, go, keep on running, just roll, roll Keep on going, don't ever waste a bit Roll I really like your songwriting, and I really actually, and I really like your playing as well. You do really interesting things with that guitar. I I found myself while I was listening to that, thinking, I it's so easy to forget that you haven't been doing this very long because your sensibilities are sophisticated, <laughs> but in both the lyrics and the playing. Um, how did you like it it was during the pandemic when things really started uh coming into focus for you with this with this songwriting want to tell us about that yeah i mean you know i had a bunch of free time when it kind of started that i didn't really know what to do with and i'd kind of you know a year prior to the pandemic kind of you know fiddled with the guitar like i'd you know i knew some chords and 
but I never really tried to play it with like intent of like writing or anything. I just, I kind of learned some cover songs and then would, after I learned the cover song, I would stop playing it. I would just use the chords that I learned and try and piece things together and, you know, puzzle through, right. you know, what's going on. But the, uh, the writing thing kind of happened randomly. I kind of just started playing and then, you know, the rodeo, the song I'll, I'll play in a little bit, I was actually rock climbing with my buddy and I fell like I was, I was, you know, harnessed in, I was good. Like it was, <laughs> but like I was, it was the first time that I went outside and I was like a little, you know, a little shy about it. And I was right. a little scared and I fell down and I was like, Oh God. But then after, after the whole thing, I was like, you know, I was like, I was just kind of playing this, this riff and I was like, Oh, okay. There's, I was like free filing going down the mountain, <laughs> nothing to hold. So I just pray. Like it was like that whole thing. And then, so that, that led into something that is not about rock climbing, but that's kind of yeah. the, the first song that I wrote. That's how it started. So after that song and kind of piecing together a few more things, I kind of just went on this thing where, you know, upstairs at night when I had nothing going on, I was just like for hours just like playing and like the same thing, just like mumbling melodies and like doing working the song out. Yeah. Just like. Yeah. Were you driving people in the house crazy? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> most likely. My mom probably had a lot of restless nights. <laughs> hey, yeah. l- luckily I picked acoustic guitar and not, you know. Like drums. A, yeah, drums like sled. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you didn't drive her that crazy. But you did manage to actually uh, start amassing a body of songs. Yeah, kind of randomly. And it was it was real weird when we started the recording process because... I never pieced them together as a collective. I just had these songs. And then when I listened to them kind of with the intent of recording them and making a storyline and a concept for the record, I was like, whoa, like these like connect like to yeah. everything that I'm going through. It's kind of like freaked me out. I was just like, <laughs> like, okay, I kind of like subconsciously wrote everything that I've been going through for like the, you know, the past like, you know, three, four years. I think that's how the subconscious works, you know, like yeah. if you allow it. And it sounds like you just allow, allow, allow. And Unawarely think, allow. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, once you, you know, so you, you just open up and you start and you're into it and you start, okay, this song and they all fit. Now, what do you do in the sense of like recording them? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah now what do you do? Well, you know, we had them or and, you need somebody to produce it or whatever. Yeah. Right? So, so we had the songs and there was this, you know, there was this one night where sled was over and I was upstairs and it was the first time that sled kind of heard the songs. I like, cause I was real shy singing is you know even back then i i still don't think i can sing but like the like properly i was you know i was never trained in you know how to use my my voice and vocal stuff and sing on key it was kind of just feel and i kind of like that though you know it's like everything i'm doing is real honest to like what i know and stuff it's not really it's influenced by other things but not not directly in the sense of at the beginning Mm -hmm. it was like i wasn't trying to be something you know right like i'm just gonna write these songs whatever happens yeah you weren't doing it because you were like look at me yeah no no, it was the other like stay don't look at me yeah yeah." (laughs) right you know this is yeah so i'm trying to remember so sled was upstairs and we i showed him some songs and stuff and we go downstairs and my mom was you know i was a bad student in high school not you know i passed and stuff. i was like i went through it but i was just unfocused i was really into fly fishing and different pursuits and really wanted to pursue like the the fishing route you know when i went up to to school in montana i was going to you know major in outdoor recreation and kind of go the route of you know being a guide and kind of pursuing that world but long story short we went downstairs and you know my mom was like what have you been working on you know the past like you know, why are your grades so low? And uh-huh. I was just like, Oh, I got you. Well, they've always been low, but like, <laughs> like <laughs> they're this lower, semester. lower <laughs> than usual. Yeah. And so I was, we just played sled and I, you know, sled sings and he sang with me on the things we just sat in the living room and played like two songs that we, I had done at the time. And she was just, uh, she was real supportive and kind of understood, you know, it was a cool moment because she understood where I was coming from, like what I've been working on. It was the first time for me that I've like opened up about that side to right. anyone. So, that, that was, you know, a probably pretty terrifying in a, in a sense. It wasn't like terrifying because it's family, but it was more just like, it was more just like I, it was just weird singing, realizing that you can sing something so personal or something like that out. Right. I mean, I've had, you know, I'm a performer and you know, and a writer and stuff, and but so I and I remember at those young ages, like when when you first like. Okay, I'm going to actually, but I think songs are even more because like with plays, you can hide behind a character 
you are the character, yeah. you know, and you wrote the songs and you came up with the chords and, yeah. you know, that's, it. it's a, it's a, it's a raw, raw place to be. So it could be like, oh man, especially when you, and, and a lot of people say that about their singing voice. I, Mark Lanigan said they didn't like his voice. That guy's got, had the best voice ever. <laughs> you know, he's like, nah. like it's, People are hard on themselves. Yeah, of course. And, you know, I was fortunate enough being in the family that I was where I didn't really, you know, I was always, I'm always hard on myself in the sense of, you know, trying to be better and trying to push the limits of what I can do. But in the sense of actually, you know, it was never to the point where like, I'm so hard on myself that I'm going to stop. It was more like, no, I know this is right. Like I'm being me and that like, just work through it, you know, work through all this stuff that you're feeling and kind of, you know, stick with it. And like, that's really, I was very fortunate in the surrounding environment that I had to do that. Absolutely, and your and and you, uh, your father and uncle, and he had good friends, and so yeah. that musician friends. And when it came time to showing, uh, you showed Charlie she- Sexton. That was a that's a cool story that maybe you can tell people how he became your producer. Yeah, yeah. So there was one night where, uh, you know, my mom grew up with Charlie, and you know, he's right. plays with my grandfather, and he's he, I just you know he's a very good family friend, and kind of grew up with him and there was no better fit for who you know would produce the first record and kind of show me kind of this you kind of opened my eyes into this world that I'd never really seen from that perspective and you know it was working in here was kind of crazy because the first time that I saw my grandfather in a recording studio was here working on his wow. latest record that Charlie produced right. so I saw them working it together in in the big room you know like same deal and then when you know the first day of recording when i walked in and then you know it was like it was like this weird moment where it was like whoa like this is like kind of full circle and it just felt right with the family and like everything you know being uh kind of just full circle moment wow yeah that's cool what uh, the uh just just like moby dick yeah that's yeah that's terry allen's the uh pretty much most recent uh, yeah yeah yeah, I remember. I was lucky. I when when that was being recorded, I was recording a, a show, a radio show, and I just got out and I was in South Lamar and I was hungry and I went to Phoenicia to get a, a falafel or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and Charlie came in with Shannon McNally and they were telling me they were down here yeah. doing that, and I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, really cool uh, that." You have all that, but you don't lose any sense of yourself. It does, you know, it, nothing you know makes you feel bigger than anyone else. You know, to, well, I'm very fortunate in the sense of you know who these people are. You know, all of them are very true to themselves and very genuine, and that's what they reflect on other people. And it's not anything forced or anything you know fake or it's them. And that's that's you know be, you know obviously they inspire me, and I would you know do as much as I can to you know, live up to what they do, but not in, not in a unhealthy way, more of a, like they just inspire me to, you know, be who I am. And yes. that's how you do that. You know, you gotta be who you are and write honestly and just kind of stick with it. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk and then. So you, you record and then you get, uh, you get the ACL gig <laughs> and you, and, uh, tell me about that. Who was, who played with you there? What it was like? I was, that was when, you know, that's probably the most fortunate <laughs> story that's happened. So, you know, it was a, that was the first time that I had ever played with a band. And the band is pretty nuts for the first time ever playing with a band. Yeah. I, I'm actively aware of this. And yeah. I'm just, I'm just, like, just in awe, kind of, you know, looking back at the tapes and stuff. But it was Conrad Kroon on drums. Conrad yeah. Kroon. Yeah. yeah. Glenn Fukunaga on bass. Yeah. My godmother, Marty McGuire, on fiddle yeah for, for the for the last two songs charlie on lead for the for the first week and then billy cassis on rhythm for the first week billy came in the second week and did the lead and filled in but and then bucka on that is on like an keys. all-star band it was nuts but the the funny thing is like you know it was it was crazy to me because i've seen glenn and bucka play with my grandfather and right. and, and charlie and Conrad, I've always seen just around, and you know Marty I've, plays with Bob for a long Schneider for a long time. Yeah, and lots so of it's, other it was weird being. It just felt, you know, kind of another full circle moment where I'm like, wow, like I'm like now I'm up. This is crazy, kind of like. Yeah, but it was also really comforting, you know, knowing all of them, and you know, understanding how they were thinking about the music and stuff, and 
know, there was this moment on the second week where I was, I was freaking out before the show. I was like, oh my God, like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can Buck, imagine. Well, Bucka kind of just pulled me aside and, you know, got, you know, luckily enough, the sound guy was super nice and we kind of just ran through a song and he's like with the full band and stuff and it was great. And he was like, you already did the show. Like, you know, you there's no one there. You did it. And I was like, okay, cool. And then that really helped. Yeah. I, when you told me that story before I thought, Oh wow. I, I love to hear that because it's true. It's, it would have been so easy to get, let all that get on top of you. You, it, cause it kind of just happened quick, you know, like yeah. you're all of a sudden you're up in front of him. It's like, Oh man. And he's like, well, that's chill you know, out with it being the first <laughs> band show. I was like, I had done, I think like, two or three or four shows before but just like real slow stripped down but i was still getting used to like using my tuner and like looking at stuff sure. and like the live whole thing was i'm still getting used to it but like the live thing was very new very fresh and so i was just like had all these things to, it was so nice to not have to worry about what they were gonna do you know like Con- there was a lot of mess ups in that set and conrad was like right on i was like wow like wow <laughs> yeah those they're pros uh do you still who is who's your current band my current band is billy cassis who you know played with me at acl john michael on bass and then connor marshall on drums okay. he's kind of more close to my age i met through my cousin great yeah um you've got uh you've got a few singles released up to now you're mm-hmm. going to release the whole record in may like like early early mid June, yeah. okay. Push it back just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. You know, no need. Yeah, no, I'm not no rush. Not, also, the the world's a little kooky after the <laughs> post COVID. No one knows what the heck's going on. I want to say that you know you said you're grateful and the, and that's good. But w- like me, uh, as a like a, I'm your I'm your dad's age. You know, so I look at it like. I'm grateful to you that you take this art so seriously and that you can continue with the torch. It's important for each generation to have those people. And I know, you know, so far I know there's you and I not sure who else there is. There's, there's, it actually, you know, surprised me as, you know, doing music now in Austin stuff, I've been exposed to all the younger, you know, people playing like Zach Person and Briscoe, oh, yeah. and, you know, it's it's I'm very it's very you know inspiring what's going on here and yeah the then there's William Harry's Cram who's yeah. Very excellent yeah there is a yeah, lot of oh, and, and uh, Marlon Sexton's band is really killer yeah well that you know it's so funny because we always kind of end up doing the same shows because we're always like playing the Continental or like you know he was a, the slot right before my ACL set and we're kind of bummed because we're always like man I want to see you play I right see you play it's like we just miss each other like right there <laughs> well I'm sure you'll fix that oh yeah no, for sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well man i'm thank you a lot for being here calder yeah, it's such a me. joy you're so great uh just you know nothing but well wishes for you and for your success in the future <laughs> maybe we can uh take us out with that last song you were telling us about yeah, stone for sure no, rodeo. Rodeo. Oh, rodeo oh rodeo yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> rodeo
One more time for Caller Allen. Caller, thanks so much for being here. If you've been watching this on the CW and you want to see the full version, please go to our YouTube channel, Songwriters Across Texas, and check out some other stuff while you're there. Caller, thanks again for being here, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Good luck to you, brother. Thank you.